Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite Podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode I finally get to show you how to create your own .folio files for your tablet devices, whether it be an iPad or an Android tablet. So when I last uh, showed you the um, digital publishing suite, uh, it wasn't quite finished yet. It wasn't it hadn't shipped. It was kind of you know still in the beta stages. But now I get to show you how all the final tools work and how they look. So let's dive in and take a look. So the first thing I would just want to recap real quick is that both the overlay creator panel and the new folio builder panel are now built in or into the InDesign application. So that means that you no longer have to run separate utilities to, to do these functions. You will find them as they always are under the window menu in their respective categories. Since these are extensions, they will be in the extensions category. So you'll find your overlay creator and your folio builder. Now if you're installing InDesign CS55 for the first time, the Folio Builder panel will most likely be blank, but there will be a link right on the panel to go download uh, your copy of the Folio Builder tools or in the um, updated uh, tools to create your folios. If you're an InDesign CS5 user, uh, you will be able to go to the adobe.com updates page and again find your folio tools for InDesign CS5. All right, so now that we've covered that, uh, just real quick, the Overlay Creator uh, panel allows you to create the things that are interactive in your particular folio file for your tablet. So you can do hyperlinks, slideshows, image sequences, audio and video, uh, panorama views, and web content. And again, these are context sensitive, so if I just draw a frame out, I will then be able to notice it highlighted the ones that I can do with an empty uh, image frame. So for example, I can do an image sequence, a panorama, or web content. If I highlight some text, for example, uh, then it will highlight or activate the things that I can do with text. Looks like that is locked. So let's go find some text here. There we go. So I'd be able to, for example, add a hyperlink um, where I want to add hyperlinks into my, for my text. So in this particular case, we have an object here that's an image sequence. And again, it just drilled down to that image sequence to show me what's there. And now I'd be able to um, manipulate the controls for that image sequence. So you might remember this is the bike that spins or rotates 360 degrees, and it's just linking to a folder of images uh, that are taken at each angle as the bike was rotated, and then InDesign will turn that into an image sequence that a user will be able to just tap and play or swipe to uh, spin the image around. So now that we've covered that, let's step back a moment. Let's close this document. Not going to make any saves here. And we're going to just start off with our cover. So we have a cover uh, for our local magazine, Fall. And it's uh, I have both the vertical and the horizontal versions of that. If I want the user to be able to turn their device and see both versions, I have to create both versions. And therefore, I have to put things on the respective versions or orientations where they would look best. So in this case, I had to make the masthead a little bit bigger for the wider display versus smaller for the taller display. So you will have to do some tweaking on your own. Now that I've got both of those versions, let's start the folio building process. So I'm gonna to go to my folio builder panel. I am already signed in using my uh, Adobe ID, my acrobat.com ID, if you will. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a brand new folio. I have two existing ones here that we'll take a look at the final one, which is the local magazine fall on the device but I'm going to show you how to create one from scratch. Let's go ahead and create a new folio. We'll call this one, just so we'll know the difference, Local Mag Fall Creative Suite Podcast, so CSP, so you'll, we'll know which one that is. And notice it's got the defaults for the iPad display. So 1024 by 768, it's going to do an automatic uh, image format, it's going to do a high quality JPEG when it needs to. So we'll click OK and it just drilled down into the folio. So it created it, and now it's in the articles area of the folio panel, waiting for us to create new articles. Now articles are what we used to call stacks in the old beta and, and previous um, versions of the folio building tools. So we're gonna create a new article for the cover. 
So it comes up and it says, what do we want to call this one? And I think cover will be sufficient. So we'll do cover and it will automatically assume that you want to import the current document that's open. So not only did it create the cover article, it is now importing and uploading the article cover that we just had open here. So now if I drill down into that cover, we will, we will see the portrait layout. Now before you used to have to name, you know, your uh, documents underscore V for vertical or underscore H for horizontal. Uh, that doesn't matter anymore. It will just take the document that's open. And again, uh, it knows to make that one the portrait one. Now if you do still have them named the old way, that's fine. That still works too. Now of course, that's just the portrait layout. I still have the horizontal layout over here that I would like to incorporate as well. So we'll just go ahead and just click, just switch to that document and click new. And then that will go ahead and upload the landscape view, if you will, of the cover as well. And just a second there. So now both versions of that one article have been uploaded. Now I can uh, go back a level. I can go back to the uh, local magazine fall um, folio, and I will see the cover article. And of course I get the ability to create new articles. So now I'm going to do an import. Now we have the, again, we created a new one based on the documents that were open, but what if I want to add documents that I don't currently have open as a new article? And that's exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create an import. It's going to ask me, uh, do I want a single article or, or folder with multiple articles in it? I'm going to go ahead and stick to a single article for now. And we're going to call this one the uh, campus ad. So this is just an, this is going to be an advertisement and now uh, same uh, image quality settings, but it's going to ask me now where are these uh, InDesign files? Because again, it, it's, it doesn't see them or I'm not choosing ones that are open. So it wants to know where I have them located. So I have them located in the university ad folder. And once again, there's the horizontal and vertical versions there with the links and document fonts and everything, just as if you would get it if you packaged up the InDesign files. So now that I've uh, selected that folder, again, I don't have to drill down any further. It knows to pick up any InDesign files in that folder. We'll go ahead and click Open, click OK, and again, it will uh, just go into that folder. It does not have to open them up in InDesign, and it will go ahead and begin the uploading process. It will just, and it's already done. So I can go ahead and drill down on campus, and I can see both the landscape and portrait layouts that it auto-detected and imported as well. Now, one more thing before we leave InDesign and head over to the Folio Builder uh, or the Folio Producer on the web, uh, I just want to point out, what if you made some changes to your documents? For example, let's say I saw something now on the cover that I want to tweak or change, and how do I do that? So let's go here, for example, and let's say I want to move that up just ever so slightly using my arrow keys. And now I've got that cover that's been updated. I can go into the flyout menu and I can just say update. And it knows to pick up the document that I currently have open and update the one that's already been uploaded. So I don't have to delete it and re-upload it. It will just allow me to upload it, rename it, as well as getting into the properties. So let's do that. Let's go into the properties for this one uh, article. And the properties is basically where you go in and you start naming each of your articles and giving it a little bit more metadata. So in this case, we're going to call this one cover. And it's the uh, fall cover. And we can do the byline if we want. And we can call this one, uh, the kicker will be um, Creative Suite Podcast. There we go. So we'll click OK. And now that's done. So then we'll do the campus ad. We'll go into the properties for it with the flyout menu from the Folio Builder panel. And once again, we'll call this one, actually it's the university ad. And it's an ad. And we want to make sure that we check off advertisement. This is uh, one of those features that was kind of hidden before where this keeps it out of the table of contents in your uh, folio. So we'll just uh, say that this is by the university. Okay, and again, we'll make that the Creative Suite Podcast uh, kicker. So we'll click OK. And at this point, we can continue, of course, adding more articles, whether we have open documents or ones that are already on in, in InDesign, but that procedure would be exactly the same, so I don't need to keep going through it over and over and over again. Let's head over to, to our web browser, and in my web browser, 
I'm already logged into the new website. The new website is called digitalpublishing.acrobat.com. And again, you're going to log into this with your same uh, Adobe user ID. Now, this is where you will get your folio producer. And this folio producer is where it will show you all the folios that you've uploaded so far. So we'll see um, the two that I had there already. And we'll see the new one that we just uploaded, which is the local magazine Fall Creative Suite Podcast. That's the one we just put there. So we can go ahead and, uh, again, give this a name, local magazine Fall. We can give it a folio number. Let's give it folio number four. We can give it a description for the Creative Suite Podcast. And here's a, a something a little bit different here. We have to give it a preview file, or basically a thumbnail. So these uh, thumbnails, now you get thumbnails automatically generated for each article, but this is the one that will show up in the device um, that you're current, that you're going to view this on. So we're just going to pick a file, and again, you create these ahead of time. These are just, they could be JPEGs or PNGs or whatever you want. And I'm going to create or grab the one that I created earlier, which is just, a, again, a screenshot or... Um, yeah, the screenshot of that local magazine as a ping file, just using the system screenshot feature. And we'll just go ahead and grab that one. It will upload it. And once that's uploaded, we'll grab the horizontal one as well. Takes a second or two to do that. There it goes. It's done. Let's grab the horizontal one. Again, it, it even lets you grab them from different sources. So you can grab it from Flickr, grab it from Google, grab it from the web, um, or your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the horizontal one. And again, those were just my simple screenshots of what the covers look like in InDesign. Now, at this point, I could open it and I could drill down any, either, any further. I can do any testing I want. And uh, what's nice about this is this is, if you remember, the old builder tool that was an air application. This is kind of that workflow. Where you see your builder, you can rearrange your files. You can't do any rearranging of your articles in InDesign because it's treating them article by article, but this is where you're actually building the full folio. So I can uh, drag and drop around to move around. I can also preview the landscape versus horizontal. I can increase or decrease my thumbnail size. And again, if I had multiple folios, this is where I would do all my sorting and any uh, extra properties that I forgot to add. So just a quick way of checking your work just to make sure it's organized the way you want before you send it off. And at this point, it is ready to go. Now, when I say ready to go, that means that as long as I'm logged in with my um, same account on my iPad or my Android device, I will now be able to see that folio in the free Adobe Content Viewer. But let's take it one step further, and this is the question I get a lot. What if you now want to share this folio with others? Here's how it works. So you're all, again, this is all tied to Acrobat.com. We're just in digitalpublishing.acrobat.com. But if you go to the regular Acrobat.com account, you will see your um, folio as a workspace. So I again, I just created this, and it's already updated. It shows me as the local magazine fall Creative Suite podcast workspace. Now, with your free Acrobat.com account, you get one workspace. So you will be able to share one folio at a time with as many people as you want. So there's no limit on the number of people you share it with, but again, you'll only get one folio per free account. If you want to do more folios and share, share multiple ones with multiple people, then you will have to sign up for a subscription to Acrobat.com. So there's uh, two sub subscription levels, or actually three if you count free. There's the basic one and the plus version. So here's the difference. The basic one uh, will give you uh, 20 shared folders. Those are your workspaces. And the, um, what's it called? The plus one will give you unlimited. So that means you can create as many folios as you want and share them freely amongst your friends and colleagues or whoever you want. So again, it's a monthly or annual fee. Uh, for the hosting of the, of those folios. Okay, and of course, you can use all the other benefits of Acrobat.com, including your meeting rooms and, and sharing files and creating PDFs and so forth and so on, including CS Review. 
So um, now let's go ahead and take a look at sharing that workspace. So I'm just going to go ahead and say share workspace. And again, it shows me the, uh, the folios that are in there or the articles that are in that folio. I'm just going to go ahead and share the entire workspace. This is where I would either type in the email addresses of all my friends or I would um, just paste in a list. Once I have the list of friends ready to go, I can then uh, just give a message. Hey, check out my new interactive uh, publication. And I'll hit share. Of course, uh, all the people I share this with will get an email and then they'll be able to go check it out either online at acrobat.com or more importantly, on their iPads or Android devices by signing into the free viewer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the devices and take a look at all of what we just did. So let's, let's do that. Let's head over to the panel here where I've got an iPad 2. Now the iPad 2 is uh, just sitting here waiting to go. I'm in a folder where I have the free Adobe viewer which is available on the App Store today. So we'll go ahead and tap it. Now notice it's updating the library. That means it's looking at my account and seeing if there's anything new. And there it is. There's a new local magazine fall four is now available. That's the one we just created. So at this point, I'll go ahead and download it. And it's uh, again, bringing it in wirelessly over the web. So that's tying into my acrobat.com account. It's going to download that file and I'll then be able to navigate and view it and do any other interactivity that uh, that particular file has. So it's here, I can go ahead and view it now. And there it is. I can go ahead and go between the two articles that we created. And of course it works in both portrait and landscape view as you might expect because we created uh, both versions of it. So we have both versions available uh, for the user to check out. Now if I uh, get out of that real quick Let's go here. Let's go home. Um, I have the original one. Let's go ahead and download that one. And the original one, of course, is the one that I created earlier. It's got the same two articles we just did, plus it's got the larger article um, that's got all the interactivity that I started off showing uh, in the first place. So let's go ahead and wait a second for that to download. And, of course, uh, that new one also has a video in it. Okay, now that that's downloaded, we'll go ahead and just uh, tap the view on it. And again, same uh, publication we saw earlier with the f same two articles, but with the additional article that we saw when I first opened up InDesign. And again, this is the one with uh, the bike that is an image sequence that rotates, as well as an internet file that will, again, show me uh, the latest version of that web stream. Uh, video that can play uh, full screen or inline, our choice, and of course uh, all of the other benefits of the digital publishing suite including slideshows, um, you know, pinch and zoom, pan and zoom images, and of course image sequences that will change or update, uh, not image sequence, image stacks that will change or update based on what we choose. Now of course we've seen this on the iPad a few times, are there any other devices it works on? And the answer is absolutely yes. So we'll just slide the iPad out for a second and we'll slide in a Motorola Zoom. So the Motorola Zoom has the same, uh, same folio file in it, again with the same interactivity, which means I create it once and I can deploy it multiple platforms just by creating the folio file to start with. So we'll go back and same experience. Okay, so now that begs the question, what about the one we shared? What does that experience look like? So let's take uh, the iPad, or I'm sorry, the Motorola Zoom out, and let's bring in another iPad. Now this is an iPad 1, uh, the other one was an iPad 2 that we were looking at, and we're going to go into the Adobe Viewer, but in this one I'm logged in as the other user I shared it with, as my personal account. So this one's going to not show the exact same folios because I'm not logged into the exact same account. And this would be uh, assuming that this person doesn't even have InDesign. This person doesn't know anything about InDesign. They just downloaded the free viewer and you shared your workspaces with them. And therefore, the files will now show up. So there's the one we just created. 
we can go ahead and download it and again it's downloading it to my friend's iPad or my colleague's iPad or my client's iPad or prospective client if I wanted to show off my portfolio or show off my work okay so it's there and again I can view it just like we did before and the user gets the same experience again this is the one we just created with the two uh, articles and there you have it we're looking at this again portrait or landscape on an iPad 1 versus the iPad 2 that we looked at earlier and this one is logged in with the account that I shared the folio to so there you have it a quick look at uh, using the new folio builder tools how they work how you can share your fol folios with others and again it's all wireless now there's no need to plug it in and sideload the files on all the users have to do is have the free Adobe Viewer and you can also view files on the desktop as well with the desktop viewer that is a part of the DPS solution for uh, InDesign CS5.5 and InDesign CS5. So that's it for this week. Take care.